Audio cables can be confusing, especially because there are situations where two cables can have the same connector, even though they're intended for very different applications. And it becomes important that you understand which cable is which when you consider that using one of these cables in place of the other could actually cause damage. Meanwhile, cables like the quarter inch TRS and XLR look very different, but they do nearly the exact same thing. In this video, I'll help you make sure you're choosing the right type of cable for your audio equipment. But if you want a helpful guide you can hold on to for quick reference, go download the free cables and connectors guide at audiouniversityonline.com slash cable guide. That guide will not only help you choose the best cable for each situation, but it will also help you understand the amazing technology behind the most common audio cables we use today. One of the most common types of cable connectors in Pro Audio is XLR, which has three pins or terminals, pin one, pin two, and pin three. XLR connectors are most commonly used for balanced connections where pin two is positive and pin three is negative, allowing noise to be very effectively rejected even over long distances. The engineering behind this is absolutely amazing and quite simple, actually. Devices designed to receive signals with a balanced connection only respond to differences between the positive and negative wires. And when noise is picked up by the cable, that noise will be the same in each wire and will therefore be canceled through common mode rejection. You can learn more about balanced audio in the cables and connectors guide I mentioned earlier, which is linked in the description below this video. The first pin on the XLR connector is used for connecting the shield, a conductive material that surrounds the two signal conductors. This shield is unrelated to a balanced connection though, which is a commonly misunderstood concept. I've got a full video on the topic of balanced audio and shielding that you can find in the description box below the video. XLR cables or microphone cables can be used to connect microphones to mixers and to connect mixers to all sorts of different devices. But be careful because this cable with XLR connectors on both ends is designed for digital connections like AES-3, even though it looks almost identical to a regular XLR microphone cable. Don't judge a book by its cover and don't judge a cable by its connector. Be sure to check the specs of the cable and the intended signal type. Just like the XLR connector, a quarter inch TRS connector has three separate connections, a tip, a ring, and a sleeve. They're also commonly used for analog, balanced, shielded audio connections. The form factor of these two connectors are different, but the general use of them is the same. You'll usually be connecting microphones with XLR cables, and that means you'll eventually have a good collection of XLR cables at various lengths. However, you'll find quarter inch TRS connections on many mixers as you can fit more into a smaller space. When this happens, I tend to use a TRS to XLR adapter, partly because I have more XLR cables, but also to take advantage of the locking feature of an XLR connector. In my opinion, there's one particular brand of connector that are way ahead of the competition, and that's Neutrik. So no matter which brand cables you buy, I'd highly recommend buying XLR or TRS cables with Neutrik connectors, if possible. Before moving on to the next connector type, I wanna mention that you can also find TRS connectors intended for unbalanced stereo connections rather than balanced mono connections. A good example of this is a headphone jack. The three pins now act as left signal, right signal, and return. This allows for both the left and right signal to be sent over one cable, but we lose the balanced connection when doing this. The next connector I want to mention is a quarter inch TS connector. This is similar to the quarter inch TRS, but rather than a tip, a ring, and a sleeve, a TS connector only has a tip and a sleeve. In audio production, you usually encounter the TS connector as either an instrument cable or a speaker cable. And it's important that you choose the right one because even though the signal will pass, these two cables should not be used interchangeably. If you open up a speaker cable, you'll see that it has two identical conductors. These are just like the positive and negative conductors in any speaker cable. They're thick as they're intended to carry signal from an amplifier to a speaker cabinet. On the other hand, an instrument cable is intended to carry instrument level signals and therefore has a much thinner conductor surrounded by a shield or ground conductor. If you try using a speaker cable as an instrument cable, you'll probably hear a lot of noise. 
And if you try using an instrument cable as a speaker cable, it may cause overheating as the conductor is not intended for amplifier to speaker connections. Just like the quarter inch TS and TRS, you can also find eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter TS and TRS connectors. The eighth inch TS connector is pretty rare, but you can find it on some control systems. Much more common is the eighth inch TRS, but rather than carrying balanced signals like a quarter inch TRS might, eighth inch TRS cables are usually designed for stereo signals. This is the case for an auxiliary cable and a headphone cable. The left and right signals are sent over separate conductors and they share a return connection. You'll also find eighth inch TRRS connectors with a tip two rings and a sleeve. These are commonly used for headsets where you need left and right for the headphones as well as a microphone input. Again, the ground connection is shared for all three of these conductors. The specific pinout will vary by manufacturer, which means you may need an adapter that is TRRS to TRRS with different connection points for the microphone on each end. Some hi-fi headphone amplifiers will utilize a TRRS or a TRRRS connector with three rings for balanced connection to the headphones. This allows the headphone amplifier to power the left and right side of the headphones separately rather than sharing a common return. Balanced connections for headphones are very rare in pro audio, but are sometimes found in hi-fi systems. Another connector found on consumer electronics is the RCA connector. These are often found in pairs of white for the left channel and red for the right channel. You can sometimes also find these on DJ equipment, and if you should encounter this in a live situation, I'd recommend using some sort of DI box like the Radial Pro AV2 to convert the unbalanced RCA connection on stage to a balanced XLR connection if you're running it over a long distance. RCA should be kept to short distances only. Also, watch out for digital connections like SPDIF and TOSLINK, which utilize the same RCA style connector. These connections look similar, but they're often orange and intended to be used with cabling that has different impedance than the analog counterpart. For speaker connections in pro audio, it's common to find Speakon connectors, such as NL2, NL4, and NL8. These three connectors look similar, but each one has a different number of pin sets. For example, an NL2 has one pin set, which provides a positive and negative wire for one speaker circuit. An NL4 has two pin sets, which can facilitate two speaker circuits on the same cable. And an NL8 has four pin sets that can facilitate four speaker circuits. This type of connector is useful when you have a PA system that will be powered by multiple amplifiers, such as a bi-amplified system. You can run a single cable to a speaker cabinet, which might take pin set one for the low frequency drivers and pin set two for the high frequency drivers. Alternatively, you can utilize speak on cables and speak on breakout adapters in the same way you might use a sub snake on stage. That is to run several speaker lines over a single snake cable, then break them out on the other end connecting each circuit to the corresponding speaker cabinet. The final connector I'll mention in this video is a Phoenix connector, also called a Euroblock connector. These are most commonly found on equipment that will be installed permanently in a rack. The captive screw type terminals allow for easy and clean installation, and they take up a relatively small amount of space on the equipment chassis. These connections are not as rugged as the other connectors I've mentioned here, and that's why they're rarely used in production situations where the system will be deployed and torn down regularly. Okay, this is a lot of information to remember, so again, I invite you to download the Cables and Connectors Guide at audiouniversityonline.com slash cable guide. There's also a link in the description below this video. But once you've finished downloading that free guide, come back here because in the next video that's on your screen now, I'm helping you learn the right way to store your cables when you aren't using them, which will keep them in good shape for years and years to come. I'll see you there. Thank you.